let's start with number 17, savings plan balance after 10 months. That was kind of a tricky one, right? Because we did 10 months on that one. So what do we do when we have months like that? Yes? You put it over 12. You could put it over 12, yeah. So um, you can say in the um, N field, you can say N equals 12, because this is monthly, times 10 over 12. Or alternatively, is there another something that we can do right off the bat without having to do the, the monthly times the 10 over 12? Can we just do 10 because that's how many payments there are? Yeah, so you do 10 months in this example. So you, would just, you could just put 10. So if, it's, if they give it to you in months, you don't have to do the full N calculation right in the, in the calculator. You can just put the number of months directly in there. Or if you want to see the math how it works, because this is monthly, these are monthly payments, you would take 12 and then multiply that times 10 over 12 and you'll see that the algebra comes out to be 10 months anyway. So you can do the shortcut method. Whenever they give you months, you just put the months in or you can do the math to see how that works as well. So for 17, 10 months at APR 3% and monthly payments of 390. So does anybody want to say what their ending balance was? 390, it was $3,944.17. So $3,944.17. So let's, thank you for uh, volunteering that. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna pick out my time value solver, my TI. And while that's loading, well, I guess I can't use my phone. I have the phone app. I'm gonna show you while that was loading what we get. Okay, so in the end for this example, we're going to have 10. In the I, we have 3%, right? Or just the three. In the, what's the next field? PV. Do we have a starting balance on this one? No, no so that's gonna be zero. Um, and we're making monthly payments of 390, so PMT is going to be 390. And uh, we're trying to solve for FV, which is the future value or the accumulated balance. What is a PY and the CY at the bottom? 12. 12, that's right. Now we're going to solve for that. And you get the $3,640.77. Is it what it? 390, okay. 390. All right, there we go. 3944 and 17 cents. Now, if you wanted to determine how much of that was interest, how, how might we go about doing that? Does anybody re remember that? You just multiply 390 by 10 and then subtract the three or 3,944.17. So you take 390 and you multiply it by 10 because it was for 10 months. And then that balance, because 390 times 10 is what you put into the investment, 390 times 10, and then that gives you whatever balance, and you take 3944.17 and subtract that. So 390 times 10, so if you want to see the full process, we would take um, 390 times 10, and then basic, we got 3,900, and so we take 3,944.17, which is what we had, and subtract 3,900, and that gives us $44.17. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but keep in mind it was uh, only a 10-month investment. So $44, not, not so bad. Okay, let's look at the next one. Find the savings plan balance after 18 months with an APR of 4% and monthly payments of 543. So again, this is one that give you, gives you the months. So right off the bat, you could um, put 18 into the N, or you can say 12 times 18 over 12, which is 1.5, and that would still give you 18. Okay, so we're going to go to finance, time value money solver, and 18 months here, APR of 4%, no present value, starting with payments of 543 monthly, and we want to know what that balance is, 
and that gives us $10,055.91. Okay, any questions so far? Or so good? Okay. The next one was find a saving plan balance after 10 years with an APR of 4% and monthly payments of 567. So here, this was in years, so we take 10, 12 times 10 years. And our interest rate is also 4%. Monthly payments of 567. And that gives us $83,000. $490.64. And again, if you wanted to figure out how much of this was interest, you would take the 567 times 120 payments, or you could take 567 times 12 payment, monthly payments times 10 years, the same thing. And then that would give you your balance, and you would take the 83,490.64 and subtract it from what you got in your own cash uh, outlay. Okay, and then there was one more. And this one is basically saying that uh, setting up an IRA at the age of 26 and depositing $57 into the account. So this question is multiple choice, but it's asking us um, compare that amount to the total deposit. So this one is two-sided uh, because uh, two parts. They want to know how much uh, you have to figure out how much he, he contributed or how, what was ending balance was and then figure out what the total interest was in this example to be able to figure out what the right answer is. Okay, so starting at 26, um, if he retires at 65, how many years is that? 39. 39 years to, from 26 to 65? Okay, so, and that's, well, monthly payments. And uh, he's going to expect a 4% return doesn't start with any money, but he's depositing $57. Okay, do we have 64065 anywhere on, that, uh, on the options? So what they wanted us to do is figure, compare that to the total amount that he's made over the time period. So how do we uh, determine how much he's made over that time period or how much he's contributed is by taking the $57 times 12 monthly payments times however many years, and you said it was 39 years. So we make that times 468, so we have 64065, and I'll just say N of 10 And whoops, What was that monthly payment that we came up with? It was 57. 12 uh, monthly payments, 57 for 39 years. Okay, so that's his amount that he put out, right? The 26,676 is his total contribution for uh, his cash outlay. But we had an ending balance of 64,065 and a penny. So let's subtract that. And what he's getting in interest is $37,389.01. And I think the, the choices were slightly off from there. Uh, 37, it's slightly off. So B, if you look at B, that's the closest solution, just because it had a penny on that first, that first one. So B means he accumulated 64,065.01, but he only deposited um, uh, the 26,676, so that's 37,389,001 cents more than what he contributed. So he's actually getting more in interest than he actually contributed, and that happens quite a bit if you invest over long periods of time. Okay, so we're gonna continue on our last chapter our last unit in uh, chapter in chapter four which is 4d and this is going to continue to um, build on our knowledge of using the time value of money solver to calculate loan payments credit cards mortgage payments etc is anybody in here 
um, have a credit card, a mortgage, or even any type of loan payment. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you have a student loan, this is one way that you can determine and make sure that the information that you're receiving on your on your loan uh, payment uh, calculator that they send to you, your loan payment amount, I forget what those are called, the invoice, but you can double check to make sure that those loan payment amounts that they're showing on there are correct. You can also double check just to make sure um, you know, your credit card interest rate is being calculated correctly. Uh, there's a lot of things. And then you can actually determine what your mortgage payment would be if you bought a house. Oops. So let's just talk about some of the basics. You already know that the principal is the amount of money. In this case, it's owed because we're talking about loans, mortgages, and credit cards. We're not talking about investments. So the principal in this case is going to be the money that you owe. An installment loan, or they also call it an amortized loan, like a mortgage, is a loan that's paid off and you have equal regular payments over the time period. So like on a car, on a mortgage, you'll have installment loans where um, you pay a specific amount every single month for a fixed number of years. And then the loan term is the number of years or the number of months that you have until you pay back the loan in full. Now the next slide is going to show you the formula for calculating this. And this is similar to what we were doing before, where we were calculating the payment amounts that's needed. Well, here's the payment formula. It takes the principal multiplied times the APR divided by the compounding periods. That entire thing gets divided by one minus quantity one plus the APR divided by N, and that piece raised to the negative N times Y. So fortunately, you don't have to memorize this formula. And in fact, we're not going to apply it. Um, we're going to use the time value of money solver, which already has this built in, this calculation built into the PMT field for us, as long as our inputs for N, I, uh, present value, uh, P, Y, C, Y, if all of our inputs are correct, it will actually calculate the payment for us. We've done this um, uh, previously in, in uh, unit 4C with calculating the total payment needed to accumulate a certain balance. So it's very similar, uh, except that now we're trying to figure out the payment needed to pay off of a loan, to pay off a loan. Okay. Okay, so some of, some of this, um, this scenario might be very familiar for a lot of us. Let's say you have a student loans totaling $7,500 when you graduate from college and the interest rate is about 9%. Your loan term is 10 years. What are your monthly payments? So this is a, a, a multi-step problem because they're asking us, what's your monthly payments? Then they're asking, how much would, will you pay over the life of the loan? And then what is the total interest that you're going to pay? So this will kind of open your eyes to see how much you're really paying in interest. Not only did we do the examples where you're receiving interest and that's like, yay, I'm getting free money. Well, when you look at it from the other side, when you're taking out loans, then it gets a little uh, more intimidating, not so fun when you have to pay all of this interest. So let's calculate this and figure out what are the monthly payments, how much we're gonna pay over the life of this loan, and what is the total interest. 7,500 APR 9% for 10 years. Okay, 10 years, 12 monthly payments for 10 years. Interest rate, I don't remember what it was, uh, 9%. Uh, the present value of that loan, so let's find out what that balance was. Uh, 7,500, so it's 7,500. We need to figure out what the payment should be in order to make that future value equal to what? Anybody have a guess? We want to figure out PMT so that future value will be zero, zero. right? Because you have a loan amount and you want to pay it off so that the future value of that loan becomes zero. What? Yeah, so we put a zero there. And now we need to figure out what PMT is. Okay, so we put in all of our information. 
We need to figure out what PMT is, what the payment is, in order to have a future value, desired future value of zero, which means you're paying the loan off. So if I do my alpha enter there, $95.01. So in order to pay that off in 10 years, I need to pay $95.01. Now you can always pay more than that and it'll accelerate your loan and pay it off a lot quicker. So, or what you could do is try to get a cho shorter loan term. And I don't know for student loans if they offer three, five, and 10, or if it's just 10, 15, and 20. I had like the extended version uh, when I was paying mine off. Um, so 95 and a penny. So we have the step, the first step one. The other question was, um, let's see. The other question was, so we have 9501, our monthly payments, how much will you pay over the lifetime of the loan? So we can figure out how much we're paying over the lifetime of the loan, and then we can also determine how much of that is interest. So if we're paying 9501 monthly for 10 years, that's what we're paying. So for a $7,500 loan, we're actually paying $11,401.20 for a $7,500 loan. How much of that is interest? Well, let's just subtract $7,500 from that. So basically, you're paying more than half in interest of the $7,500 because it's $3,901.20 is total interest. So we figured out the total amount, so you have your payment, and then we figured out how much you're paying over the lifetime of that loan by multiplying that by the number of uh, years, times 12, and then to de determine how much of that is interest, you just subtract your initial value, your starting principal. So $3,901.20, does that surprise anybody for how much you're paying? turns out to be a lot. Okay, so this is one way that you can determine, like let's say if you have a financial aid package and you're thinking, okay, so over the next four years, I'm going to need overtime, I'm going to need, um, <clears throat> let me just take out <clears throat> a certain amount of money, the APR right now, the interest rate is good or something, and let me just take this out, and then I'll, I can figure out how much I'm gonna owe when I finish, when I graduate, it's usually six months. I know with COVID and everything, they've had all these special uh, uh, deferments, um, but usually it, after you graduate, it's six months after you graduate that you start your payment. So let's, pre let's give a hypothetical situation. Where you're trying to figure out for 10 years um, what your monthly payment would be if you took out $17,000 in student loan. Okay, so this is 120, we'll leave that for 10 years. And the interest rate, does anybody have an idea what they are right now? They were really low a while ago, but I don't know what on student loans if the interest rates are lower now than they used to be. Let's say that they're lower than 9%, let's give it a 4%. And we're gonna take out $17,000, and we need to figure out what our monthly payment is going to be so that we can plan ahead uh, to start paying that off six months after we graduate. And you're gonna have about $172.12 at a 4% interest for $17,000. Does anybody want to model a particular situation for a loan, even if it's pretend? How about we do a, a car loan? Okay, so um, my, actually, this would be very relevant because my husband was in a car accident. He was um, T-boned by a, a high school student. So his car was completely totaled, and now we have to pay off the, the car because we had a loan on that car, and our insurance will cover that, but now we gotta buy another car. And right now, if you're not, if you're not familiar with the car market, not so great right now because of COVID, right? So supply and demand. So let's say we decide to get another car, um, and usually the loan, the car loans, you can get like a three year, you can get a five year, they now have six years, seven years, depending on the car. So we'll do a five year. So five years, 
times 12, and the interest rates are pretty low right now, at least for, so I'm gonna say 2%. And let's make the present value of the car, um, since they're pretty high, let's call it 37,000. And we need to figure out what that monthly payment is going to be, so we can pay that off in five years. So $648, that's a big payment, right? $648.53, I could, I could put that away instead and save for re retirement and vacations. Um, okay, so let's say $37,000 is the amount of my principal and we come up with a payment of $648.53. So $648.53. for, for uh, 60 months because it's 12 times five for five years. So um, over the life of that uh, car, I'm paying $38,911.80. And the car was, uh, what was it, 37,000, I guess? Yeah. Okay. So this comes out to be $1,911.80. And it's not, I mean, that's still a lot of interest, right? I mean paying in, in interest, but it's not as much as it could be because the interest rate on this, I put it, was like 2%. So um, there's still, you're still, it's still giving money away, you know, in this case, um, to, to finance something. Okay, let's look at the next example. So we have, they used the formula here for that, that example that we were looking at. And we got 9501, and you can see the life of the loan, how that's calculated, and your total interest. So there's an example in the PowerPoint presentation that's within the module if you wanted to see how we walk through that process. So you can take a look at that. Other than the using the um, calculator, uh, calculate, uh, sorry, the formula that they use, that's the only different thing that, that we do. Okay. Actually, let's, let's take a look at this slide. I think this slide is important to see. So and there, the way it works, um, it's an amortization loan because it's a student loan. Um, we can, you can actually see how this, the interest is accumulating and how you're paying it off step by step. If we just take a look at the first three months of this example. So in this example, um, we're looking at a $7,500 loan, 10 year terms, APR of 9%. Now, we figured out what the payment was and everything on our time value money solver, but what this is going to do is this is going to walk us through uh, something called an amortization step. Amortization is something that where basically it's the interest, it's the total interest that shows you how much you're paying and how the interest is amortized or applied after every single month. So you start with the interest. Now, the interest is, if we're doing this step by step, the interest is 9%. Written as a decimal, that's 0 .09, but because we're doing this on a monthly basis and we want to see what the output is, we have to divide that by 12. Okay, so that's where they get the 0 .0075. 9% divided by 12. So 0 .09 divided by 12 is 0 .0075 multiplied by the balance of 7,500. That's where we start on month one. My total interest is $56.25 during that first month. Okay, my payment that I'm making that we determined using the time value money solver is 9501. If I take 9501 and I subtract 5625, which is my total interest, this is the actual amount that's going towards the principal. So you can't just take an amount and say, oh, I'm gonna take um, $7,500 and divide it by 9501, because that's not how it works. You have to keep in mind that there's interest being applied. So 9501, minus the interest that we calculated for that first month, this is the amount that's actually going. When you pay $95.01, you're only cutting out $38.76 $38 of the $7,500 that you took out. So I take $7,500, subtract the money that's going towards the, to eat the principal, and that gives you your new balance. So at the end of the first month, your new balance is 7461.24. So notice if you take 7500 and just subtract 9501, that's that's not going to get you this. You can't just do that to figure out how long it's going to be. You have to do this amortization process. I take this number and I carry it all the way forward to the second month. That 
A balance gets multiplied by the 0 0.0075. My new interest, notice it's a little bit less because the amortization, that's what it does, is it pays off the interest a little bit, a little bit at a time. So now we're, we're paying $55.96 in interest, and now this $95.01 payment that we're making towards the payment goes a little bit further. It's a look, a, like a, less than a dollar more because now $39.05 is going towards the principal. So if I take my balance at, on month two, which is not $7,500 anymore, it's $7,461.24, subtract what I'm paying off with, towards the principal, I'm, my new balance is 74, 22, 19. So incrementally it's creeping, you know, the, the interest amount lowers just very slightly and then we do this. And so then we bring this over here, multiply that by 0 0.0075. This is the total interest. How much is going towards the actual principal? Well, you take the payment minus the interest. So now we're 29 cents more. We're paying off a little more, 29 cents more than we were before. We take the new balance, subtract what we were paying towards the principal, and then this is our new balance. And then we carry that forward. And you do this, and you do this, and you do this. How many months was this? It's 10 years. So you would be doing this 120 rows until your balance is eventually paid off. So there's ways that you can do this within Excel that make it so much easier. You just create the formula in row one, and then you just copy it down 120 months. Um, but this is uh, real important to see, so that way you can see that how much of the, your, your payment is actually going towards the, the principal. And uh, when you're taking off a, a car loan, or when, especially when you're taking a mortgage, you'll see that the bulk of that payment goes towards the interest. And it's kind of disgusting when you think about it, but it's part of our life here and how we do mortgages. So any questions on how we did this example? Does everybody understand how to calculate the payment that's going towards the principal and then the next month, the following month balance? So you carry out at the, at, at the end of every month, that ending balance that you end up with, you carry it over to the beginning of the next month. Okay. Okay, now credit cards are not like installment loans. Credit cards are like revolving credit, right? It's revolving, it just keeps going. So they don't, you don't usually have a set amount to pay off a, fi a fixed value. Credit cards, because it's open, your, va your balance can vary from month to month on how much you're gonna pay. So it's a little bit different from the installment loans. Um, a minimum monthly payment is required. If you have a credit card, you probably already know this. The monthly payment generally covers all of the interest, but very little principal. I know that's changed since uh, the fallout with the banks, so now they have specialized rules um, where you can cover a little more than just the, the principal, uh, than just the interest, sorry. It takes a very long time to pay off a credit card if you're only making the minimum payments. You've probably already been told that plenty of times. Okay, suppose you have a credit card balance of $2,300 and an annual interest rate of 21%, which are pretty accurate, right? They're 21, 22, 23, 24. You decide to pay off your balance over one year. How much will you need to pay each month? Assume you will make no further credit card purchases. So let's say you're like, okay, I'm determined. I want to pay this off. I'm not going to charge anything. $2,300. I'm going to pay off a balance in 12 months. Um, how much is my payment going to be? Okay, so I want to pay it off in one year. So that's going to be one times 12 or just 12. And the interest rate was, was it 21? Yep. Okay. And the present value of that credit card was $2,300. And so I need to figure out what the payment is going to be to make that future value equal to zero. $214.16 to pay that off in a year. $2,300 at that interest rate. That's a really big interest rate. 21%. And if you think about it, you know, with the, with the credit, it's 
it's really hard unless you cut it up or do something with it or completely close the account it's unlikely right that you're unless you're super disciplined it's unlikely that you're going to spend on that credit card again so um, $214 is if you want to pay it off in a year if you completely shut the credit card down um, but still I mean that could be a big chunk you know of your money especially if you're you know full-time student you're not working full-time $214 and 16 cents you know it can be a lot now if we think about that um, $214 and 16 cents for 12 months So twenty five sixty nine ninety two would be what we were totally paying, and the what we owed was twenty three hundred. So we're paying like two hundred and seventy dollars, basically, in interest throughout that twelve months, because we're making that payment of two fourteen sixteen, and we owe twenty three hundred dollars on it. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So here is the uh, uh, formula way of using it, 214.16, so they got the same thing that we got. Okay, now let's talk about mortgages. Okay, so mortgages, that's how you own a house or a condo or a townhouse, basically. Um, Mortgage is an installment loan. An installment loan, again, it's fixed amounts over a specified period of time. Typically, mortgages, you can do a 10, 15, or 30 year. Most people, it seems to be a 30 year loan. Um, you could ask your parents, if you live with your parents, if they have a, loan, a mortgage, and if so, if it's a 15, 10, 15, or 30 year, and you can figure out all that out. You usually have to put down payment on, if, if, especially if you're not a first time uh, home buyer. Um, you, can, you have to put money down uh, on the house. There's also closing costs that are associated with the loan, such as paying the title company fees, the appraisal, you have to run credit checks. And these, these can be in the thousands of dollars um, you know, to close a house. I remember, gosh, when we bought our house so many years ago, the closing costs alone, and this was you know, 20 years ago or so, were like $6,000 just in closing costs. So those can be pretty high. Um, with mortgages. Okay. So we have a couple of kinds of mortgages. A fixed rate mortgage is probably the best type because it doesn't change over the life of the loan. You get one installment over the time period, whether it be 30 years, 15 years, 10 years, and that's the amount that you're sticking to. An adjustable rate mortgage, also called an ARM, not fun because it's based on the interest rates in the market. So if the stock market interest rate value, the, if they just, Treasury decides to raise rates, your mortgage adjusts with the market. So you can end up going from a $1,500 mortgage payment to you know $3,500, depending on the interest rate. So um, those are really never fun to get locked into unless you have a very short period of time that you're planning on having that house, maybe you know six months or less than a year, and you're pretty sure that the market is going to stay the way it is. Okay, so fixed rate mortgage. In this class, we're going to only focus on fixed rate mortgages. Let's see a great bank that offers a $100,000. I think we're going to have to start upping the, these amounts now because with $100,000, you can't really get much in these days. 30-year, 5% fixed rate loan with closing costs of 500 plus they're talking about one point. Okay, big bank offers a lower rate of 4.75 on a 30-year loan but with great bank closing costs of a thousand plus another two points. So they want us to evaluate the two options um, with the points and the closing costs and everything. So um, let's take a look at what the, we're just gonna look at what the mortgage payment is. I'm not gonna talk about the uh, closing costs and the points and all of that. I just wanna get to the, um, the different. So we have great bank, $100,000, 30 year at 5%. So we're gonna model that one. And then we're gonna do big bank at 4.75 for 30 years. Obviously the 4.75 is gonna be lower, but we can take, take a look at what the different payments will be. Okay, so they <clears throat> did great bank right here, and you can see it's $100,000. Um, 
at 5%, so 53682 would be that payment. So let's figure out how they got there. Okay, so it's a 30 year loan, so 12 times 30. And I believe that was 5%. And we need to, the present value, how much of that, what was the loan amount? $100,000. We need to figure out the payment on that to make the present val or the future value of that equal zero. For, so for 30 years, we're going to be paying a payment of 536.82. 536.82. That does not include interest and taxes. That's just the mortgage loan. You also have to pay interest. Uh, I'm sorry. You have to pay not interest and taxes. Taxes and homeowners insurance. So that doesn't include taxes, local taxes, and it doesn't include homeowner's insurance if you have to get homeowner's insurance. So you could add on an additional amount on top of that. Okay, 536.82. The other one was 4.75%. Uh, so let me just write down these two amounts. So 536.82 is one payment. The other one was 4.75%. So that payment's going to be lower 521.64 okay so let's take a look at what we're paying over the life of the loan on either of these so the first one 536.82 for monthly for 30 years gives me $193,255.20 that's what I'm paying over the 30 years but what was my original loan balance? 100,000, right? So we can figure out what we're paying in interest. Ninety-three, th almost the same amount in interest that you're paying for the house that, <laughs> that you actually have in your principal. So $93,255 is total interest on that over the 30 years. And that's why, <clears throat> People will say, oh, if you can pay a little bit extra on your mortgage just to get to eat away at that principal, do it. Make a $50 extra payment. Make an extra payment every year if you can to cut towards that principal because otherwise you let it go the whole entire length of the loan, you're paying a ton in interest. The other one was 521.64 for 360 months. And so that's a little bit less, but still paying quite a bit. So 87,790, 87,000 in interest. So let's, tr maybe we can find a real world um, scenario. Um, let's take a look at, just let's take a look at a house in Chandler. Ooh. All right, so let's say, let's just go on Zillow. All right, and the first house that we see on the right-hand side, $505,000, 614 West Chilton. Four beds, two bath, 2,035 square feet. Yeah, four beds, two bath, that's about right. So we'll take a look at that. Houses are, house prices are crazy right now. But let's take a look at that, and let's pretend we'll model the 505,000 one and see um, we, we can get a 30-year loan Right now, interest rates are pretty good. So let's say the interest rates are, uh, well, let me say 4%. So 505,000 at 4% interest for 30, we're gonna get a 30 year loan on that house there that says three days on Zillow, this one right here. So let's figure out what that monthly payment's going to be. Just the mortgage, now again, remember, that's just the mortgage piece for the loan. You still have to pay Chandler City taxes and homeowner's insurance if you, if you pay, take off if you take more than 80% of the loan value. If you, pay le if you put more than that down, if you, let's say you put 20% down or 21% down on the loan on the house, then um, you don't have to pay homeowner's insurance. But if you pay less than 20% down, then you actually have to. Does anybody want, let's say, let's, let's pretend we're gonna put 10% down. So we put a, a total value of uh, $50,520. So let's take, 505-200, subtract the 10% down payment. Is it 
the 505, was it 505? Okay. Um, minus, okay, so we put a 10% down because you've been saving for the last 10 years to have a good down payment. So now that's the loan amount that you're going to take out. After you put down 10% of your own money, the loan amount is going to be 454680 on this pretend house that we're going to buy. Okay, so 454680. And I'm going to put that right in here so I can remember it. 454680. And the interest rate is 4%, and we're going to do a 30 year loan, so this stays at 360. So let's figure out what that mortgage payment will be. Now again, that just the mortgage, that doesn't include the taxes and the homeowner's insurance. Okay, so 217071 is your mortgage payment. 217071. So you can go home and thank if you live with your parents, you can go home and thank them um, for paying these amount. Um, my daughter is always surprised. Their kid, they're always kids are always surprised at how much it costs to make a living. Okay, so 2170. Uh, point seventy one. Okay, so well, let's figure out what we're gonna. Our total interest is going to be over thirty years if we keep the thirty year loan. Twenty one seventy seventy one. Monthly for thirty years. So over the life of the loan, we're going to be paying seven hundred eighty one thousand four hundred fifty five dollars and sixty cents for the house. That cost. 505200 So over 30 years you will have paid $276,255.60. You can buy another house with the interest. So that's why it's important to make sure you know what you're getting into, help you know model this information so you can budget accordingly. Um and uh, make your life a lot easier. Any questions on how we did that to figure out the total amount that we paid? Okay. We have one more. Okay, no, I think that would be it. So let me have, we have, we'll do a, an example of this. Um, just a couple more. Okay. I think we might have a, um, those problems that we did uh, today, uh, the warm up, we may have like a repeat, but as a quiz. So if you understood what we were doing this morning, um, you'll do really well. We end up doing this quiz. Okay. It's really blurry, isn't it? Or is it just me? Is it blurry? Mm -hmm. it's blurry. Okay. Okay, how's that? Okay, so here let's take a look at number 23, 24, and 25. Determine the total payment, 23 says, determine the total payment over the term of a home, mor home mortgage of $120,000 with the fixed APR of 6% for 25 years. The second one ask you to calculate the monthly payment on a loan of 9,000 at a fixed APR of 9% for five years. And then the last one says, determine how much of the total loan payment applies towards principal and how much is towards interest. So you have to figure out how much was towards the loan how much was towards uh, interest in that very last one? Okay, let's start with that first one. Okay, so the first one is determine the total payment over the, over the term of the home mortgage of 120,000. So they want to know how much you're paying in total. So we have 120,000, a fixed APR of 6% for 25 years. <clears throat> okay, so 25 times 12, 
the interest rate is 6%. That present value of the loan is 120,000. So we need to figure out what that payment is so that we can actually figure out the total payments over time, right? So the total payment. So that payment should be 773.16. Okay, so that's what your pay monthly payment is going to be. Does not include local taxes or homeowners insurance, just the mortgage. 773.16. So now we can figure out what that's going to be over the life of the loan. Seven seventy three sixteen for twenty five years monthly <clears throat> is two hundred thirty one thousand uh, dollars two hundred thirty two practically thousand dollars on a one hundred twenty thousand dollar loan. So that's what we're paying over time for the one hundred twenty thousand. If you wanted to figure out how much of interest you're paying, you just simply subtract one hundred twenty thousand. This question didn't ask that, but if you wanted to, you could figure out that you're paying $111,948 in tax in uh, interest. Okay, the next problem. Any questions before we move on to the next one? Okay, the next one says calculate the monthly payment <clears throat> for a loan of 9,000 at a fixed APR of 9% over a period of 5 years. Okay, so five year period, so this is going to be 60. My interest rate is 9%. Uh, the present value is 9,000. And so the question is calculate the monthly payment. 186.83 is my monthly payment for this loan. 186.83. Okay, the last one is determine how much of the total loan payment applies towards principal and how much applies towards the interest. So they want us to break it down on the principal versus the interest. <clears throat> For a $121,373 loan with a fixed APR of 8.3% for 25 years. Okay, so in order for us to do that, our first step is to figure out what the monthly payment is going to be then we can figure out over time what we're going to be paying and then subtract the two to figure out what how much is interest. Okay, so my N is 25 years for monthly. So that's 300. My I, is that 8.3%? Okay. Present value is 121,373. And I, my first step, I need to figure out what that monthly payment is going to be to have that future value of zero. So 96102 is the monthly payment on that amount. But the question is, how much is towards principal and how much is towards interest? Well, the principal amount is the 121,373. So we can figure out the total interest by taking 96102 for a monthly for 25 years. That's what we're paying over the entire life of the loan. Of that, 121,373 is my principal, and the rest, 166,933, is interest. So 121,373 goes towards the principal, 166,933 goes towards the interest. And if you wanted to see step by step how much is interest, you can do that amortization example that we saw where it did three months, three uh, months of the interest rate so that you can see how this is being applied uh, early on. Any questions on how we calculated those? Okay. 